Hello, 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 and welcome to Tell It Like It Is Tuesday. This is a fun weekly series that I've been putting together on topics that I come across during the week, things that I'm personally working on or I've seen a lot of. Sometimes it's super funny, sometimes it's super random, and sometimes it's super, super honest. So today we are going to talk about shooting. Now it sounds like a really funny word, but one thing that I've been working on this week is looking at the places in my life where I have a rut. And through this exercise, they want you to identify certain areas. They give you topics and they say, you know, identify some of your ruts. So as I'm going through and figuring out the things that I do want to work on, I'm like, do I feel like I should work on this or do I actually want to work on this? And it got me really thinking. So. We're gonna wait a second for people to jump on, but welcome to Tell It Like It Is Tuesday. I'm Beth, the Muscle and Mascara Mama, and we are going to talk about why we need to stop shooting all over ourselves and others and figure out a plan to fix it. So comment when you say, uh, when you get here with one thing that you think you should do and one thing you want to do. Okay, and we're going to talk about some of those differences, but feel free to like and share this out to whomever you think might find value in it. Um, that's what we're all about. We're all trying to help each other out, right? <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about um, a couple things. So let's first define shooting. So just to be careful and clear, I'm not swearing. <laughs> okay, one, let's define it as, in simple terms, creating a ton of pressure on yourself to do or be something based on something you think you're supposed to be, supposed to be or do rather than who you are and what you want, okay? Those are two really, really big differences. Something that you think you're supposed to do or be, not something that you actually are or want to be. So I think we've all become um, captive, captive by this like internalized voice of what we think we should be, okay? Um, and it takes place really of more powerful and accurate words like I will, I can, um, I want, okay? So when we look at why we are not progressing in certain areas, part of it is where our mindset comes from. So shooting not only sucks, but it breeds shame and guilt and anxiety and all of these other horrible things. Um, and again, it replaces negative or excuse me, positive energy opportunities with a bunch of negativity. So get it out. Let's stop shooting. Okay. There are a lot of important things. Now people are going to say, well, shouldn't we do this? Or shouldn't, shouldn't we be nice? Um, shouldn't we spend time with family? Shouldn't we, um, you know, do all of these things. So I'm not saying that you're not supposed to do those things or you shouldn't want to or feel like you were compelled to do them. But if we come from a place of should, simply should, our motivation and underlying intention is compromised, okay? So here's what I mean by that. You are shifting away from should to could and it takes you away from being in this mindset of a victim, okay? From should to could, you are no longer the victim. And it is then with could that often leads to how. So when you say, I could be making, you know, X amount of dollars, your next thought is how? How, how can I do that? If you say, I should be making, all of a sudden you're in this negative, like, poor me, I should be, but I'm not, and I'm not willing to do anything about it, right? Okay, so let's talk about five ways, four ways. Do I have five or I have four? I made some notes. I have four. My pretty little notebook that my daddy got me for my birthday, because I'm a writer, I like to write. I like to type too, because it's faster, but I think better when I write. <laughs> okay, number one way to break the habit of shooting all over is to dig. Now that sounds weird when we're talking about shooting, but I want you to ask who and why and what, okay? You gotta put things into context, right? When you say should, you know, it could be from a million different places. So think about this. If you said, I should not wear pajamas to a wedding or I should wear pajamas to a wedding, you know, the answer is gonna be no, you shouldn't wear pajamas to a wedding, 
um, you know, it's pretty inappropriate, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't wear pajamas. You know, it really depends on the circumstance and you have to figure out where that's at. Um, then you need to figure out the who and the why and kind of marry the rhyme and reason together. Um, I should eat healthier, right? How many of us said that? Okay. Super, super vague. It gives you no direction and it sets you up for failure. Okay. So we need to marry that with a who and a why and then we can move on from it, okay? So instead of, I should eat healthier, super vague, there's no context around it, it has no goal set in mind, and we say, I should eat healthier, because if I eat healthier, I will, will have more energy, which I'm really, really lacking right now, okay? So we're kind of putting that motivation and intention behind what we should do versus just throwing it out there, okay? So number one, dig, ask who, why, and what and understand the context okay number two get specific okay we're kind of just talking about this but should often precedes a hard to reach undefined goal okay as the muscle mascara mama i go through these things myself oh i really should do this okay but it means nothing it's a waste of time and energy when people say i should get into shape should meaning like according to who right um, I feel like we're setting ourselves up to fail, okay? When you put this like thing out there with no goal, no action, no intention, um, you're ultimately going to be disappointed by that, okay? So we're going to start replacing should with will, want, could, okay? Start thinking about how you can replace those in your everyday life. Find yourself you know, stopping yourself when you say that and figure out the who, what, why, and, you know, dig a little bit deeper to figure out um, where we need to go next, okay? Then we have watch for the sign. That's number three. Watch for the signs. So we're all taught super, super early on in our lives to question what we should do. You know, like you think even with little, little kids, like, well, what should you do? You know, you're trying to get them to choose the right answer, but we're already putting these like parameters and boundaries on like everything that they should believe, right? Um, so then we start to think about, you know, what you, you put should in a, a mindset in of a have to, or I'll be judged if I don't, or um, I'll be disappointed, okay? All of this just signifies a misalignment, okay? If you're feeling negative, like you're forced, you're pushed, um, you know, what are they going to say? Like all of those are the wrong motivation. Okay. And we need to figure out how do we align those better? Okay. Do you actually feel on board with this should? Okay. So if somebody's saying, well, you should really do this. If it aligns with your goals, your intentions, your motivation, then yeah, maybe that's the direction you should go in, but you should do something just because you feel you should. Okay. Um, Think about whether it's a place of fear or love, okay? Is there a fear driving it? Am, am I going to be missing out on something if I don't do this or feeling a certain way if I don't? Or, you know, are you doing something because, you know, you really love it? Um, you don't want it to ever be a pressure point. If you are making decisions because you feel pressured, you know, in that way, then you're probably not making the right decision, okay? Um, so if you should... Okay, in these things that people are challenging, well, you should really go to this, you know, dig a little bit deeper, ask that why and find that motivating factor um, to figure out where that sits in your heart and what kind of um, alignments are going to have with your goals um, and where you want to head long term. Okay, last thing is decision time. We will forever be faced with decisions forever. Okay, we make like I can't even know, I don't even know what the number is, like thousands and thousands of decisions every single day. And it might be easy, like, do you want lemonade or do you want tea? And some of them, like, do you want to quit your job or do you want to stay? You know, some of them are a lot bigger, but it's how we make those decisions that um, really determine how we feel going forward, okay? So you got to prioritize um you know, a couple of things. So you don't want to focus on the ultimate dilemma, like, oh my gosh, I have to choose, you know, well, I should do this because, or I should do this because, um, start prioritizing by importance. Well, you know, these items are, 
you know, sit closer to home. They're more important to me than these. And that ultimately should be guiding your decision. So, um, you know, figure out your context, figure out your who, what, and why, and which better aligns with your goals. Um, and make sure that, you know, you feel good about that, that it's aligning with, you know, what's going on in your heart. And, you know, be very specific about it. You know, if you're making a decision, you want to understand, know, um, and really kind of feel exactly why you want to do that. And then you're going to feel great about your decision. There's always going to be hard decisions. I'm not saying that any of this is easy, but if you start thinking about why you feel you should and let that guide you in your directions and your choices, you will end up making yourself a happier person in the long run because you're not doing what somebody else wants you to do. You're not doing what someone else expects you or maybe what you have been taught to expect of yourself um, that truly doesn't make you happy. That truly isn't, you know, what your passion is or what's um, ultimately guiding, you know, your decisions in life. So our four ways to get out of shooting all over yourself is dig a little deeper, ask the where, the who, the why, the what. Number two, get really specific. Make sure that the end result of that should is aligned with whatever goal that you have in mind. Number three, watch for the signs. Okay, make sure that you're you're stopping yourself when you start to question all of those shoulds. When you start to say, you know what, I feel like I have to or I'm pressured or I'm going to disappoint somebody if I don't make a certain decision. Stop yourself right there and walk back to those other two points. Then the last one is when it comes to decision time, make sure that you are prioritizing. Look at the two options, prioritize by what aligns with your goals, um, you know, and everything personally that has value to you and figure out what better aligns, what choice better aligns with those. And you'll end up a much happier person um, and able to really reach a lot of different things because you're not being guided or misdirected by everyone else's shoulda um, comments or you know advice because people love to give advice they'll give it to you all day long so check yourself before you should all over yourself <laughs> that is tell it like it is tuesday four ways you'll be able to check it out on my blog very soon but feel free to comment if you're watching the replay with one thing that you should do and one thing now that you could do Signing off, muscle and mascara mama.